as an individual, if you're looking for fat loss, you can do a number of things before ever, ever needing to track calories and macros, right? There's a, like, the way I kind of break it down is into that tier system. And we'll walk you through that just really basically. And then we'll kind of go through a few different protocols that would fall under that just to make it a little bit more clear. So if we were to go to habit-based change, right? You could elicit fat loss by just changing your habits. No actual understanding of nutrition in general, apart from, okay, you know, calories are what need to be manipulated, right? You could engage in you know, eating a little bit less food, maybe swapping out some foods that are higher calorie, like Gary was just eating some jellies there. You know, you might swap out some of, you know, those hyper, you know, dense calorie foods, you might swap them out for less calorie dense foods. You know, you're soft, like say Gary, for example, there, he's eating those jellies. He might've swapped that out for like an apple or something, you know, that might've actually lowered his calorie load, still got a little bit of sweetness or maybe sourness or whatever he was looking for from the diet. And boom, you know, calories are down a little bit. You know, he might swap out, he was drinking milk. He might swap out skimmed milk, right? And obviously look, Gary's trying to gain weight at the moment. So he might do the opposite of that. He might be like, right, I am drinking like skimmed milk or 1% milk or whatever. I'm actually going to go for, you know, whole milk, you know, full fat milk, you know? maybe even drink fucking cream. I don't know how gallery, Gary needs to get his calories in, right? Um, oh, cream. Yeah. <laughs> so like that's, you could do that. That's just habit-based change. We're just going to change a few little habits and that's going to lead to the outcome that we want overall, right? And again, these habits can be really all-encompassing. Like you can be doing like, you know, broad sweeping habits. Like, oh, I'm going to skip breakfast. You know, that's a habit that you do. Um, and that can lead to, you know, a pretty substantial reduction in calories, you know? Um, there's a multitude within that, right? And we'll, we'll kind of come back to that in a second, right? So the other one then we could do is portion control, right? And all of them are, all of the methods are effectively portion control. Like that's, the, it's what they are, like portion control. You're controlling your portions, right? Like what do you think calorie and macro tracking is? It's controlling your portions, right? But what I'm talking about here in terms of portion control is setting some, we'll call them food rules around how you're going to organize your plate. Right. And again, we have different rules, you know, there's different, like if you look at like, you know, uh, the, my plate from, um, the American, what the fuck is that called? The nutrition people who make nutrition advice in America, uh, the NIH CDC, <laughs> whatever, anyway, right. They, you know, they have a, 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 my plate, right. Um, and they use that to be like, right, this is how your plate should look. If you're trying to control your portion sizes, you know, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to manage your weight overall. Right. And you can use something like that. You can make up different food rules in terms of like, oh, I'm going to have four meals per day. Each of those meals is going to have like a fist size portion of protein. It's going to have like, you know, two fist sizes of vegetables. It's going to have whatever, you know, like you can make up different food rules and um, so that you can manage your overall calorie load so that you can get the results that you want, right? And that can be effective overall. And for a lot of people, that's actually where I like to get them to, right? Now you can do that as a starting point. You can get them that starting point and be like, boom, we're actually at that starting point. And this is the method we're going to use for the rest of your life. But oftentimes, especially with the populations that we deal with, we'll introduce some calorie and macro tracking at first, which is the next thing, the tier three. And we use some calorie and macro tracking, really develop an understanding of nutrition, really develop an understanding of, you know, the different constituents within the food. And then from that, we'll develop a practice where you don't need to keep tracking for the rest of your life. You know, you move back effectively, you might have even skipped it initially, but you move back to portion control, right? Like if you're eating, you know, relatively similar portion sizes every single day, relatively similar foods, like there's no need to actively, like actively track that, right? If we built an awareness around hunger, around, you know, listening to your, your body overall, like a lot of times people fall into the trap of just eating more food when they don't necessarily need to. Like I was only discussing this with a client the other day where like she was saying that she will just hit the number, you know, like she'll literally be like, you know, 2000 calories we'll say, and she'd be at 1800 calories by the end of the day. And she's kind of like, yeah, I'm not really hungry. I'm not like, it's all good, but just because it says 2000 calories, she'll be like, I have to hit 2000 calories. Right. Which is beneficial in a way, especially if you're looking in a, like a weight gain context, you're like, sometimes you're not going to be hungry and you're still going to need to get the calories in. Like Gary, I presume you're not really all that hungry at the moment, you know, but you're still like, 
need to get that food in. Um, so that's, we don't always want to listen to the body. You know, sometimes we need to kind of put those signals to the side and, you know, consume a certain amount of calories. Um, but for a lot of people for fat loss, we do want to build a better awareness of hunger signals, satiety signals, that kind of stuff, right? Um, so we have act- effectively used that calorie tracking, that calorie and macro tracking to circle back to get to a portion control method, right? Now, I've just given you a framework there, right? Now, only a portion of that or only a segment of that actively looked into like calorie and macro tracking, right? Now, calorie and macro tracking is fantastic as a tool. It teaches you a lot, or at least it can teach you a lot because I know a good few people use calorie and macro tracking and you know, they actually have no clue about the diet. You know, it's like, they're just like, oh, like, I really don't know what foods are high in protein, fats, carbs. This is often the case, especially if you have a lot of calories to play with, you know, it's kind of like, you can just, you know, hit the targets fairly easily, right? Um, so like, you can use it as a, a tool to educate and also you can just use it as a tool to blindly hit these numbers. You know, it's like, you see people all the time doing this where they're just like, it doesn't matter food quality, it doesn't matter food timing. They're just like, as long as I hit these numbers, I'm good to go. And from a fat loss perspective, you know, that's, you know, doable. That's a, effective, you know, it's not optimal. It's by any means for health or performance or even like muscle gain or muscle retention, but it can be done, right? 